He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though of my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord hath taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. We will turn to our program, and we will be doing the hymn that is slated, Great is thy faithfulness.
approach the throne of grace reverently. Our God, who is omnipotent, all powerful, our God, who is omnipresent, you are here and everywhere else just now. Our God, who is omniscient, you know all things. And you know what is happening here at Gates of Praise, United Pentecostal Church, just now. You understand the hurt, the feeling of bereavement, the accomplishment of your son that has passed and the family members who are here to give kind support in a time of sadness. We ask Heavenly Father that you will extend your hand of comfort, that you will embrace everyone here this morning into afternoon gives strength like no other hallelujah we pray god for his lady his daughter family members and all those who care so much about this man whom you have taken help us lord to understand that your taking is superb is supernatural and we can't do anything but look to you for grace for comfort for encouragement in this time i pray for this service that your divine spirit will orchestrate everything that is said and done today let the songs be in tune let the reading of the scripture be the right one let the messenger deliver your word unto your people. Lord, souls are here to be saved. I pray that this occasion will bring consciousness and somebody will resultingly be saved because of your words and what happens here today. We thank you for your presence and we commit everything into your hands. And we know, Lord, you will lead us on because you know all about this. I pray, God, that our hearts will rejoice, that our lips, spirits will be lifted, and that your name be exalted above all. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor Francis. We've been having the first lesson, and this will be read by Dr. Nash A. Cousin. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 through to 18. I'm going to ask you to remain standing while we read the scriptures in the way. After which we have the selection, which will be done by Daniel and I. Read from verses 13 to 18, and it reads, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them, which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, for the Lord, for the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall as descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain with shall be caught up together and bear with them in the cloud, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another, Amen. 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 This 
afternoon we reminisce on the life and time of Desmond Williams. I generally call him Saibi because I remember back in the 70s when I got this nickname Persephone. He got this nickname Cyclops. So from that time, I just call him Cyclops. And today, I just want to remember him in this way.
part of this service of Thanksgiving for this I use this opportunity to welcome everyone present. I know Desmond has touched a lot of people Amen. here in St. Anne and elsewhere. And many of us who are here today have some level of association with Desmond. Where I'm concerned, as for me, I'm acquainted with his mother, brother, sister, family members, and he was one of my personal mechanics as well. Yes. And so we had good relations. Then, even before his death, it's a sad occasion for all of us here today. It's a time of grieving. And I know those who are more closer to him than myself, you're grieving greatly. But I want to offer condolences to you. I've seen, you know, it's not easy. Try it, it's not easy. I may not say any more as it relates to associates. It's not easy. Death is an offer that none of us can refuse and is considered an unruly guest. Doesn't even notice anyone who is coming. Uh, the scripture refers to death as an enemy and how it gained its entrance into this world and came on the back of sin, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and, and, and so death is passed upon all men, but we give God thanks today, he who is the omniscient one, omnipotent one, omnipresent one, conquers death, and for sure, death will be destroyed, amen, amen. the last enemy that will be destroyed is death, it's an enemy to the cosmic environment, everything experiences death because of death. And so it causes us pain and sorrow, but we're glad we have hope in Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage everyone today to look to Him. He is our comfort, and I'm going to say to the family members and all who mourn today, just like how He gave support to Mary and Martha, the loss of their brother. He's able to give you the kind of consolation and support that you need at this time. And so I pray that you'll find that kind of a comfort in Jesus as you continue to mourn. And we will continue to lend our support to you in prayer. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you that kind of peace that you need at this time. Pastor Mercer Francis will be coming to come to the rest of the program in Jesus' name. I greet everyone in the exalted name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's great being here. It would have been very sad if we had a body lying in a casket and nobody comes to support. So tell one another, it's good to see you. Yes, talk and get with an attention. You got to get with an attention because we're going to sing and clap and worship the Lord. Desmond knows what it is to sing and clap and worship the Lord. He's accustomed to an apostolic service. And so we want to be sure that we do something that if he were here, he would have felt happy that we're doing what he would have wanted us to do. I know Pastor did the welcome, but there are some persons he might not have seen or their names were never mentioned. But I see Minister from the Adventist Assembly in St. Anne's Bay. Is that Mr. Clark or Pastor Clark? I don't know. You can just wave your hand. Amen. Clark, God bless you. And I see on the program one Pastor Herman Richards. Just wave your hand. We're trying to recognize some persons. 
she's on her way. Thank God she's on her way. And we also see uh, we have special recognition of persons who serve the country and serve the community. We have Mr. Winston Clark, JP. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. I am not in that category, so I didn't even realize. Yes, then we have counselor candidate, uh, and the name is K. Let me get it right. K. Dean Harty. Harty, wave your hand. She's not here. I'm the representative. So you will be the representative. Yes. I am getting out of the program fast, but I just wanted to know if you will represent yes. her because I got her name on the program. And that was something to be done. Praise the Lord. Yes. So we are getting on now with the next item by Miss Nicolette Carter. It's a tribute. I would advise to spend three minutes because if you go longer, you might see my black hem. <laughs> Thank you. Properly, a phrase you especially use 
his work. He was loved by his family and most part of the children. They all call him Uncle Desmond, and he was their preference because he always was them. From Brittany to Blake, to Ajani to Blair. Zane, Malachi, and Mary. He had a huge heart and helped everyone in need, asking for nothing in return. If I could pattern any of his traits, it would be the ability not to hold grudges or anger, but give it time and move on. This one you would miss. The roles you played in being a father, a brother, and an uncle, and a friend. Your customers too will forever be grateful for your years of service <coughs> to them, and where they will find another mechanic. As with anybody else, we will never find another Desmond. Who knew Desmond? Knew he hated flying and would make a fuss when the time came for him to go to America. So that's my spine. I find it ironic me saying, Fly high, my friend. So peacefully on your journey. I saw this poem and thought to read it as they are words Desmond would like to impart. Don't grieve for me, for now I am free. I'm following the path God made for me. I took his hand when I heard it call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work or play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found that place at the close of the day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with remember joy, a friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Ah, yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full. I've savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't let it slip down with undue grief. Lift up your heart. And share with me God wanted me now. He sent me. Amen. I have a tribute by Minister Daniel Wilson, his cousin of the deceased. Come, sir. I'm accustomed to say praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, I'll be speaking on behalf of the community. Uh, looking around, I see quite a few of our colleagues. Just stand to help me to stand a little straight, get a little straight. Style. Come on, all the rest of the community guys. God is here too. All right, um, Desmond. I tried to write some things about Desmond and then I chore it because I really can't um, write about Desmond. It would be a complete book to write about Desmond. Uh, Cyclops, <laughs> Titus, Scott the Ground. There's one other toe that can't touch the ground. <laughs> He's my friend, Kay. <laughs> and, um, anybody else want to show what he is for the community? Leader. He was the leader. Mr. Rollins said five of them. <laughs> no. This man, we did grow up in the days when we had all the um, electronics thing. And so we create everything we 
want to use. Uh, yes, from gig, slingshots, and you know, we will make slingshots from the rubber band and also from the, the, the right rubber. And we will um, shoot one another with it, with paper and it, and sometimes we get really dangerous with the wire. <laughs> Skater, bunker, cabbage skills, everything. And we make our own play tools. But we can't do nothing unless Desmond commands it. Because he was the he was the leader. Desmond was the worst at anything we do. <laughs> Shooting bird worse. Playing football, which we started at the latter part because we didn't used to that. That cricket was our number one. Worse. He didn't know which one to use. The bat will be going up all over the place before the ball delivered. And he will be jumping all over the place. Um, but you can't form a team unless he is the captain. <laughs> unless that team won't play, he's going to stop it. Because he is the? He is the leader. Cooking? You know, we had fun. Cooking, we will cook our flour, but we don't have any meat. So we just throw a piece of butter in it and turn it up and down. And stick it with a piece of stick, and that's our food. And he will organize it, not put in any money. <laughs> because he is the, he's the leader. <laughs> no. We start to ride skater, cart, bicycle, and at one stage I see Desmond riding a bike, and I said, Desmond, what did we do back? But we ride, we start everything, and with all of that, he was the worst. He finally found his talent because he will drive everything from a bucket top to pushing tire with breadfruit in it to driving hose wheel and then he start to drive. Now Desmond find his talent because he was a good driver. And then he found his talent, he became a mechanic. He was better than all of us being a mechanic. So he found his right part. I recognize he will call all of us boys. Well, come here, boys. Go for that. But when I look at the program today, I realize he's just five years older than me. <laughs> As for you, Danny, you're a little boy. Go around here, son. <coughs> Have to go around here because. This one is the, he is the leader. Now, we surely miss him. I would go by his garage if a week passed, two wouldn't pass. And especially myself and Mr. Hyde, we'll meet there with him and we'll talk all the history. It was just a few days before he stopped coming, we were there talking about all the things. Uh, the fruits in the air, we read them for those who can't read them. And I would call ourselves thieves, but we used to. <laughs> <laughs> we used to help the people in the area to, to reap. And we are not going to reap the worst. It will have to be the, the best. I remember, I think Desmond died some time ago because there was this coconut tree. I can't forget it. And the owner claimed that it was poison. 
That's what I want to buy an idiot. Coconut can't pie in the pantry. <laughs> so he said, pick one for me. And we picked the coconut, and this man drink the water, and he eat the meat. And we sat on the container top, waiting for this man to die. <laughs> After a period of time, we said, this man, how do you feel? As good as ever, pick one more drink. <laughs> Now you know what happened to that coconut tree. We pick everyone and drink them, cut it, and keep it up around the tree. So he was our leader. We could talk all day about this man, but the time is not there. I wouldn't buy a car unless this man examined it for me. Say it for me. And I, he allowed me to buy one of the worst one I've ever bought. <laughs> and he carried it to his garage and he put it in it and he started to push it down to lock the down. That's what we call that part. At that time, the garage was not by where it is now. It was run by the bus park where the hardware is. And he kept pushing my car further in it. And so I have to put on my clothes and go down there and say, I'm going to sleep in the car. And he fixed it up and gave me. Take the pistol and sit not on the garage. <laughs> <laughs> and so we will travel all over Jamaica. The last vehicle I bought, I bus it up here. We went to Green Island. That's about two years ago. And we leave Green Island and we go to South and then back. He's my friend. And I surely miss him. <laughs> my brother is saying he went with him to buy his son as well. All over Jamaica. You know, I must say this before we leave as a mechanic. You know, you, you call him any hour to come and assist you. But, you go by his garage and he said, this man is not working good. He said, I don't have a time to hear your <laughs> And you can't wait any longer and so you leave. And it breaks down on you when you call him. I hear the ears are. You're in the skin and I'm a patient. <laughs> but he's coming within a short time. Receive the message, he start to pack up everything. And what I like about him, he trained so many mechanics all over St. Thomas State. Stand by. I call you this test one second. Not a mechanic. And I think there are a couple around here that this man have trained. And you know, he was a teacher because he prided himself from we were youth as a leader. It's so hard we take care of one time. <laughs> we didn't steal it, we just drive it away. <laughs> we were a set of trouble, but we were good community guys. God bless you all, and I pray that the family will just take comfort. And God is real. In these troubled times that we are in, the best thing we can do is be safe and to be a child of God. God bless you as we continue to worship today. Thanks for this. Thank you, Minister Wilson, for that interesting historical agenda of the life of Desmond. We will have Damien Jarrett. I've skipped one, but that person isn't here yet. Damien Jarrett. After Damien Jarrett, we will have Pastor Herman Richards. God bless you.
I'm not so short enough, so I have to wait Yes, praise the Lord, everybody. Um, everybody will know that this man is a friend, a brother. And I could even write to say what I'm going to say today because we share so much. But before I go further, Brother Danny, I think all of you men who just stand up need to stand. Please, just for a minute. I want to say something to the church about these men. These men, I have served the police force for 20 years. These are some of the most dignified men in St. Anne. We need to give them a round of applause. In including President. In my 20 years and 6 months, I've never seen a new world man face me in the station. These men don't know to be serious. They always laugh. Look at this one. And if you look at that one over here, they don't know to be serious. We need to done. We need to give them a round of applause. Is that crazy? Very good. And you can see no gentlemen. I think being around these men as a boy who grew up without a father, I think you would have played some role in my life. As a boy living in New Grove, I used to know the beavers by sound, you know. Yeah, man, when Daniel come, I know I said him that. But I couldn't want this man leave because he changed people so much. <laughs> but I listen when he start up on the hill and I said, this man started up with a mommy, we need to move now. Yeah, but we, we go way back. But this man was not just a mechanic, this man was a practitioner in the field. This man was a ten spanner in the tool pile. Yeah. He's not the biggest, but he's the most important and he's the most stolen tool in the pile. <laughs> and what I find ironic about this man, no matter how you have a difficulty, he's going to help you. Yes. But you know what I find even more strange about this man? When we come to the garage, Jared, you know, knows this one, so of course, me have just fixed him vehicle. And so the man, of course, say me the man who just cause him a belly. He, he find fun in helping people. Yeah. But what I know is this man was a lover of fruits animals and children. I have an eight-year-old daughter in Canada right now mourning for this man. This man pleasures to hear me say, this is the greatest school for Adrian. But this man, when this man pick up Adrian and I go for her, this man we are hopping in her banana. He not carry their sweet man. This man was a lover of animals. He, he, I gave him a shih tzu dog. And every day this man have a story about his dog. He has some dogs at the garage. Once they're sick, he's going to get medication. He loves animals, children, and fruits. Yes, I remember one day one of the guys left a bunch of banana with this man. Right banana in the shop. And said, keep my own until a further time. When the guy came back, this man started laughing. The whole bunch was finished. This man eat every one. But what I know this man further was hospital and nurse. Yes. The deal was to go part that man. No care he go over the shop. He ate the nurse and he ate the hospital. I remember one day I went to the garage. This man was not looking so well. And I said, oh, you look so man. I drive the police car. And I said, oh, you look so man. This man said, you know, we don't feel too good. I said, come, get up. I care the hospital now. So I was in my overall. I was the transport manager for the parish. And this man in his overall. Two of which were the hospital like two madman dirty. When we go to the lady and she check this man pressure, the lady said, Sir, the pressure high enough, they go help me to you know. You hear me in my mind now, oh, why? So they go tell this man that now. Me knew this man in every argument, you know. So when she said, I saw two ways that the doctor, while sitting there, this man touched me and said, Come to her. Me knew what the dream is. Leave me down and smell up and tell this man don't like the hospital, and, but I can tell you, he's one of the most loving human beings that exists on this land. Well, sometimes this man do me a bad talk, I come out of the garage, and I don't say anything. This man come and push me and say, why are you with me? He said, the man don't remember that I'm upset enough. The man come and push me and say, how are you big city? It's a friend that, when I heard the news in Canada, I, I what I take, Comforting is when I came to Jamaica October and saw him and get to touch him. His daughter, I thank you again to touch him and remind him that I love him. 
And that's what gives me comfort. And when I heard the news in Canada, I sat for about two weeks, I didn't speak. And one day I was driving my tractor trailer, I carried my wife on the road with me. And I turned to my wife in the quiet and said, baby, you know, I miss this matter. She said, you know, a long time I will hear it out. But I just, I do I expect that I could not say it. But I'm here to give you my support, and I just want to sing a song for you. Many times in my childhood, we traveled so far by nightfall. How weary I grow. Father's arms would slip round me so gently. My son, we're going home. Thank
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Special good afternoon to the lay angel of the house, my colleague and friend and my look at that. Everywhere I go, people call me Miss Francis. <laughs> and I say, I, I answer. And I make sure that I don't do anything to bring her down. Thank God. We're here today and I, I am not, um, I, I have mixed feelings today. And there are so many reasons why I should not be here. But I have met Desmond 10 years ago in St. Anne's Bay. And this very smile reminds me of Desmond. This is the smile I get for 10 years. Never a day I get another one. Every time I meet him, this is the very smile I get. And he said, Pastor, if I don't call to you before I go into church, he said, Pastor, what kind of nasty life that? But some of you know. You don't come to me. I say, still love you. Yes, he was just so sweet. He's there for me and he's ever there for me. I'm very happy today to say that Desmond has left us, but I know he had time. He was sick for a while and I'm happy to know that he has time to repent. Can I get a witness? It's not for two weeks or two months when you ask God forgiveness and he's going to say, wait. He's going to come through for you right there, right now. Can I get a witness? Amen. And because of that reason, I want to sing this song for us, not to, for Desmond, but to encourage you that no situation that you undergo, it will soon be over. Tell your neighbor today, what a day when we have no problem. Turn to your neighbor and say that. Because we all face with challenges. What a day that will be when we have no problem, no situation, no sickness, no crime, no pain. I want to encourage a great family today that there is coming a day when nothing matters. Praise God. There is coming a day when no harm What a day. 
but you're not always cool. But to be good and cool is special. Amen. And good and cool. Yeah. And when the brother spoke about the influences in the community and the other men who are standing, Mr. Wilson and the others, you get a sense as to why he was also good and cool. But you also could understand why as a country we could use a few more men who are good and cool. And I want to challenge us today because as somebody who has lived and worked in, in, in multiple cultures, one of the things that we share globally is we don't die until we are forgotten. We don't die until we are no longer remembered, we are no longer believed and modeled and spoken about. So we have a challenge here to keep Desmond alive by continuing what he started, continuing to create more young men. And when I say woman right now, we talk about our young men because that's where a lot of our challenges lie. Young men who are good and cool. Yes. I mean, the church has to play a role, the schools have to play their roles, uh -huh. the community has to play its role, the community, the family has to play its role. Because a Desmond is not an accident. It's not an accident. It's nurtured by a community and people around him. And we have to push ourselves to do the same. Because believe me, we need a generation of good and cool men. And all of us are challenging you. Can play a role in ensuring that that happens. Ensuring that we keep this memory alive by creating more good and cool young men. That's right. So, we heard about his passion, we heard about his skills, or sometimes lack of them. <laughs> but it's also difficult, at least for me, as somebody who aspired to lead, not to hear that he always led. Yes. He always made sure you knew where he stood. And even when you don't like it, he claimed the leadership position. He yes. must know how to do it. He knows he can get other people to do it. And so I take that from his life. And so to help ensure that he lives on, that is something that stands out for me and something that I would want to emulate. We are challenged when we use people who are so precious. But in this case, it seems so easy to remember him because he was, can I say, recreating himself. We heard of the young people he trained. We heard of the ways in which he gave. And that's the other thing I heard this morning. Like, you show up at this morning and you said, well, at least in this person's case. And you have the one right now, you know. And it was that issue. Right? Not allowing those things to come between him and the relationships which he had created. To me, believe me, that is good and cool. And I want to challenge us as we leave here, as we remember him, as we mourn, to ensure that he lives on in everything we do by helping to create a generation of good and cool government. May his soul rest in peace. You have represented Lady Hearty efficiently, and we love the positives that you reiterate. Yes. Second lesson comes to us from Luke. Let me see. I'm sorry. It's John chapter 14, verses 1 to 5, and will be read by Reed. Scripture we take it from John 14, 
from first one to two. Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God. He believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it was were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Third and final verse. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there will be you also. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There we will be also. It takes a particular mode to be there also. So let's prepare. Amen? Amen. I think I want to ask all those whose vehicle has been looked after by Desmond to stand. I am standing. Come on, people, stand up and show up that Desmond has been your mechanic. <laughs> Photographer, video man, and those of you are outside and this one has worked on your vehicle, come inside. It's a credit to this one. And look at people's teeth and people's body language. They have said, Yes, come on in. People are just feeling happy that this one was a good, calm man. Yes. We salute this one. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we have a selection by Amazing Grace of Apostolic Church and it seems like Nasha Henry's sister will be doing that and then the person who provides a good uh, look and the cascade is Heavenly Dove so they will come afterwards to do their piece. So let us have Amazing Grace of Apostolic Church now. That is my church but she's not here today. What a happy time to be when we all get home over by the crystal sea. Never more to roll. Come and listen in that whole land of the soul where the joy bears are.
and they present to us now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm just going to do this to be off of heaven and hope. And then get at this. You've been in the storm, and it seems like Night of confusion has been so long. The ship has lost anchor again, and the storm got to drift. So, 
So, di ba ako ngayon English? I'm not Jimmy. You can notice that. But, um, I would like to say goodbye to a good friend, brother-in-law, Oscar, father, friend, cousin, uncle, that is moments. Our time to meet was really short, but at that time, I could meet a nice person, happy, laughing all the time. And like I saw all these good and nice things, I could see too his suffering, his sickness, because I was one of the person in between many that was taking care about him when he was sick. <laughs> Still I remember him saying all the time, bring me home, speak with the doctor. I got discharged. And I said, yes, no, you have to wait. You have to wait. But we never expect that he gone so fast. So I would like to say goodbye again and thanks to everybody too. Thank you. Thank you, RN nurse, Bradley Brown. So the SDA church will come now after Osnell Brown, brother, for an open tribute. After that, everybody will participate in the offertory action. So come. You soon get to do your part. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell, wow, that's good. Tell somebody you soon get to do your part. So the SDA church is coming? Okay, beautiful. Minister Winston Clark. <laughs> Driving off it. 
I'll tell you something. Uh, Benz, when you drive a Benz, you know, you, you send out that recognition, to be honest. Yeah. I went to a certain hotel. It, it, the, the, the security guard that even asked my name, he just lift up this thing and I take it. <laughs> and he joked to me, he couldn't drive the car, but after that he went in the garage, we had to change the engine and eventually sold it. But that man, he would laugh at you. And also, you know, the, the Catholic Church had a bus, was uh, he sold it to somebody, and then there's man and a guy named Derek and I went to St. Mary again to purchase his bus. A long, 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 almost like the church. I know the school was, they used in America for school. So Desmond, they tried to start the bus, he wasn't starting. Tried to start the bus, but Desmond wanted to drive the bus home. He went like several attempts were made and the bus would not start. And then we sat the way home. And then we used to joke about it in the garage. Derek always said, man, when you go to the back of the bus, come like up and down here, okay? Go so, oh, oh, along this bus. But, this man was a good guy, as you did, and he said that uh, would have He would laugh at you. He, he, all, he's, all, he was always laughing. He never had a sudden moment about this man. And when this man fixes my car, he never charged me. He only charged me for the parts I was just giving money by the parts. I said, when I'm talking about that worry, man, you and I are different. Never charged. I, I had to was to give him something, but he did not want to take any money from me. That was this man. So now, a friend of mine, I recommend Desmond to fix a friend of my car. And she took it by the garage and Desmond was driving it around for testing one night and suddenly they held him up in so in Claremont and they stole the car. One man took him out of the car, I think. Yes. Yes, and when he came to me, I went to recommend tax at the time and he came back and said, Brother Clark, you know they stole the car last time. This man. Fear came over me now because I know maybe I would have most to go and pay for a car that and I went down to the that they stole the car, and you could see the expression on our face, you know that I had, I had was to maybe pay. So we went all about the place, driving around Claremont to you know, Joe some place up the top, you see that top. And we ended up in Alexandria driving out around the police road up always, we could not find the car. I said, right, but what is this stuff? So he then tell you some police who won the car and said, yeah, I was so glad to be honest. They wow. took it back and said, this man, this man said, let them take it out. <laughs> they had to come for it. <laughs> they had to come for the car. So she came for the car and then that was this one. You know, but what I, when this one was in the hospital, I tried to get him on several occasions, but I could not get him. And I found out about him a couple of times. He was, one day when I called him first, he was there, he saw them very weak. I said, this man goes, what do you call Brother Clark? Brother Clark, man, well, I'm not feeling too well, you know. Don't know. But he was down. So I prayed for him. Another day, he called him back a couple of days after and said, if I could try to get a walker for him. Remember, I've heard of my old name, Cody, he had one, so I said, ask Cody for it. And I asked Cody. And then I called him the evening, and he was so only more here. He thought of fact, his voice was so only more strong than this day. And then there's one. I always threatened that I'm going to baptize him, you know, to be honest with you. Because if there's my way to the Adventist school sometimes ago. Yes. And yet there are a lot of things that discuss at the garage of politics, <laughs> religion, <laughs> relationship. It was like a, a learning school. You, you discuss everything here. As a matter of fact, one little this man, so Danny said he, he loved animals. He loved dogs so much, I gave a dog once. And that dog was so good that this man fed the dog. And he, he could leave that dog at his garage and go home. I would not offend anybody, no. The dog, nobody could go in the garage. If you had a bark, you could not go over there. He didn't ride, the dog did not like anybody who ride on a bicycle there. And he didn't, did not like Rasta <laughs> Sing back after you. So I was somehow somebody poor and the poor dog. This one was so grieved. He grieved for many days because that was his little pet dog. And so back to what they were saying, I called this man. I said, this man, remember all the still that I want to baptize you. You're on your bed now, you're in your bed. And I want you to do something for me. I want you to pray to God and ask him to. All of us are sinners, saved by grace, by the grace of Jesus Christ. 
I want you to confess your sins to Jesus Christ and ask him to come into your heart that when you do come out, you, you, right now you can accept Jesus Christ where you are. You might not be able to come to be baptized because you are you're, 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 you're ill, but give him your heart and say, yes, brother, I'm going to do that. So, so I prayed for him. When I prayed for him, I said, yes, man, you, you are a child of God. You, you, you gave God your heart. Are you going to stand by the word that they prevent to you? You will come out of the hospital. You're going to be baptized and be a part of God's kingdom. And say, yes, brother, Clark, I'm going to do that. But sadly to say, he died about two days after. We are hoping and praying. God is able to do all things. We are hoping and praying. Which I, I, I have that confidence that he, he confessed all his sins to Jesus Christ that day and, and invited Jesus Christ in his heart. So I'm hoping and praying that on the getting up morning, yeah. where the saints of God shall rise, and Jesus Christ will come to claim his own, that this man and all of us here will be a part of the throne, that we meet him and go home to spend the church with him. Let us keep that blessed hope in our hearts. God bless you all. Thank you, Elder Clark. I have never laughed so much in a funeral for a long time. What a lot of good things, good stories we are hearing about this month. Thank God for that. So, Othnell Brown, are you coming? Brother? No? Okay. Let's hasten on then. We are going to have the offertory hymn when we all get to heaven. The ushers are coming. You can stand and rest the offering. Ushers. Stand by the rest of the offering be used to the glory of God. And we give you thanks for being here with us in Jesus' name. You may sit.
and any punishment that she was going to meet out to him, somehow, somewhere, you know, was going to get a little blame in it for how she treated him. During his mom's illness, Desmond demonstrated how much care and compassion, how such care and compassion that were, I mean, it was just exemplary. When he went past, I remember the funeral service was held right here in this very church. And just how Desmond was so overcome by grief and how, because he had just lost someone he truly loved. And, you know, when I was walking down again today, and by the way, um, I really must comment on the church in how they have fixed up the, the passageway. I could walk back ways down this time, and perhaps the next time we can take the escalator. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, you know, Desmond, Uncle Desmond adored his niece and the Keisha and Nikki. I think he treated them better than their mother, Debbie. <laughs> I mean, honestly, David, David, David. he was such a loving brother to Debbie herself and stepped up as big brother when she was, when she migrated and wasn't here to take on some of the responsibilities. Shauna Kay, his daughter, known as Kay, as we know her, he loved her immensely and she was his heartbeat. The two had a special bond that I think we better just leave that alone because only they understood each other. This man was helpful as you have heard in so many ways. And somehow, somehow, somehow and in some way, he touched the lives of family members here. When I was just at family union where he had the responsibility for transporting the chairs and tent to Cranbrook or taking different family members like Georgia and, and Obi to buy their first car, Obi being a car fanatic like this one, I think Obi somehow didn't forget this one, kind of souping up some car that he wanted to drive and race. Thank you, this one was the wildest. Um, but he touched the lives of family members. This man was a no-nonsense kind of person. He said what he meant, and he meant what he said. He was a straight shooter, perhaps because he never had one of those pet names. Nicknames, yes, but not one of those pet names that you got from who were born, like Bev, or Nadine, or Debbie, you know, or Bobsy. That you only discover, that you discover is not your real name, only when you went to real school. Not this one. He cut to the chase and got to the point of the discussion very quickly. I always saw him as a cousin who was tall, dark, handsome, independent, jovial, witty, or as some of you have already said, facey. Most of you will know him well, will remember this one's signature laugh. His room was an infectious laughter. He was an animated kind of guy. He laughed with his entire body. He movement and with a twist. And he laughed a lot, he said that already. He greeted you in laughter. And he said his goodbyes in laughter. When this one was was a very short illness. Um, and I think that one knew he had a, a, a medical issue to take care of and didn't pay sufficient attention to that. You know what you have heard, he didn't like hospital and so on. I had the opportunity to visit and witness the Desmon while he was in hospital. And it was one of the times when he was really weak but he was still smiling. And we prayed together, and I witnessed with him. I gave him the assurance that family would stick by him no matter what. And I reminded him that no matter what he was going through, there was someone bigger and better than family who was advocating for him. 
y seguridad. Um, although we are, we are familiar more increasingly about his several health challenges, the expectation at least amongst family members was that, you know, he would be released from hospital, get back to the garage, gradually get back into the work, and gradually we would have some more time with him. Unfortunately, that was not to be. His passing was a shock actually to us. And I anticipate there will be continued pain and grief and unanswered questions still yet. Here I'm thinking of Kay's daughter, who also went to her brother Maxine and did a marvelous job in caring for him. To all of us, his death is another gentle reminder that life is that that life is not in our control. We are all only. We can all only be reminded that God is sovereign. Uh -huh. He can do whatever He wants to do, whenever He sees fit to do it. And those of us who are believers must continue to maintain our faith, believing that in every occasion, God will cause even the most distressing details to work out for our benefit, because He's a mass, He's masterful at reworking the trials of life, Amen. the triumphs. Here Romans 8, 37 to 39 on this. Yet in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's what those of us who are in Christ. It's for the rest of us who are not in Christ to decide what it is that we want to do. I really pray that today we'll all be in that same space. During the fall of illness, leading up to his death, I learned a lot from, from him and more so too from the situation. One of them is about running out of time. I expected to visit him more often than I did and to pray with him in person more often. Cute and my sister would be yes, I'm praying with him on the phone. And you know, I want to do so more frequently in person since I was in Kingston. But for all kinds of reasons, I had put off going to, to visit him for a few days before he passed. On the very day he passed. I attended church online because I was having a slight migraine. And when I felt that I gathered up myself to visit the hospital to see this one, only to get the message he had passed, I ran out of time. And there are so many times that I ran out of time. And perhaps that has happened to you. My pledges for us to do everything possible with God's help and the leaning on the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that we don't run out of time. During this month's illness, I saw some practical demonstrations of what love and care looked like. Maxine, I'll just say this to a few people. Maxine, thank you publicly for doing so much. I don't think she's here, is she here? But I just want to thank her publicly for doing so much of the heavy lifting. Of the heavy lifting for this month during the time of need. She has demonstrated what love, care, and forgiveness represent in practical ways. Brenda and Marlon, I think they are outside. Um, don't they stop, Brenda? Brenda, okay. Um, thank you for your support, which was just on time, and this one depended on your help in so many ways. Particularly to Brenda, who with her knowledge we learned a lot of how to care for this one. I want to say to Brenda, if she is in my here shot of what I'm saying. 
muchas gracias por su tiempo, por su tiempo y su profesionalismo. Tus conocimientos como una enfermera están a una gran diferencia en la atención de la persona. That was Spanish to her because she's Spanish. She's, she's Spanish speaking. Sí, sí. <laughs> sí. Debbie, Debbie and Keisha, your presence here say, says a lot. We know of your love for your brother and uncle. Keisha, we know you were very spoiled by this one. To keep. Again, you have done your very best as a daughter. Not only financially, but in showing up for your father. Cherish your great memories with your dad, and over time I pray this grief will turn into gratitude. Especially to God for placing him in your life. And to the other daughter who spoke earlier, I don't know where she is now. Okay. Ah, Brenda, hola. Hola. As we say goodbye today to Desmond, may his soul rest in peace and light perpetually shine on him. And may we emulate the good he did. And whatever mistakes he made, may we also recognize what they are and act appropriately. <laughs> Thank you very much. Persons who are related to Desmond and are doing justice to what they are asked to do. Thank you, Doctor Sharon Miller. So, I have the opportunity to make a few adjustments. So, a few things will be changed because persons have already more than once did their parts. So, Pastor Hermine Richards, just praise the Lord, JP. Amen. So, we have the eulogy now by Dr. Sharon Hayden, cousin. Then we will have the sermon, and then prayer for the bereaved family will be done by Minister Susan Barnes Winston. So, let us now have the eulogy by Dr. Sharon Hayden. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. The pleasure is mine. I'm a bit hesitant because it's not much, it's not a good thing when you've done your speech and then everybody did it before. <laughs> but it also is consolation because it speaks to the nature of the man. Yeah. All that has been said before, don't worry, you'll hear it now. <laughs> Eulogy for Desmond Dean Williams, October 24, 1962 to January 7, 2024. Don't be offended by the laptop, it was chosen deliberately because as you can see, the theme is blue. First, I would like to express our appreciation to the host pastors, Bishop Howard Francis and his wife, Pastor Marcella Ward Francis, for hosting the Thanksgiving service for our beloved Desmond. We also want to say thank you to our friends, relatives, and community members for their support during this period of bereavement. And for your presence here with us today, in person or online via Facebook or on YouTube. We are indeed grateful. God bless you all. Please allow me to take you on a historical field trip as we seek to honor my cousin Desmond through an overview of his early life, personality traits, achievements, and memorable stories about him. I have sought to capture Desmond's life in several episodes which are not necessarily in chronological order. Here are the categories through which this eulogy will unfold. One, early life and education. Two, professional life as a mechanic. Three, family life as a fantastic father. I had to look at my cousin Shannon for that one. 
lasting legacy, lessons we can learn from Desmond. Early life and education. This day in history, October 24, marks several historical events, three of which will be mentioned here. First, on October 24, 1861, the first telegraph transcontinental system was completed by Western Union, making it possible to transmit messages rapidly across the United States of America, bringing an end to the Pony Express. I can see a puzzled look on your faces, but do not worry, it will all become clearer a little later. Then, October 24, 1945, marked the founding of the United Nations and is now celebrated as United Nations Day. Now, fast forward to October 24, 1961. On this day in history, the music charts in the United States was topped by the song Run Around Sue by Dion, and the number one song in Great Britain across the pond was Walking Back to Happiness by Helen Shapiro. While in the quiet rural community of Dawson Town, St. Anne, on that same Tuesday, my cousin Yuna echoed the happiness from the number one song in Great Britain, Walking Back to Happiness, as she welcomed a bouncing baby boy who was her first child and the product of her union with Alcon Williams into the world. She named him Desmond Dean Williams. Thus began the life of the man who we are gathered here to celebrate today. This was a few months before Jamaica gained independence from Great Britain, a less complicated period, I imagine. Education. Desmond began his formal education at the Golden Spring Basic School, known by community members as Miss Cox School. That was operated by the late Starwood educator, Mrs. Rose Cox. He then attended Lime Hall Elementary School. His educational journey continued at St. Anne's Bay High School, the Seventh-day Adventist operated secondary institution in St. Anne's Bay. And you heard Edward Clark mention that earlier. However, the story is told that Desmond spent most of his secondary school days on the campus at Marcus Garvey Secondary School. <laughs> which was attended by his friend Atoll Williams and others. Desmond was a curious child who was fascinated by machines and anything that had an engine. Uncle Bobsy may recall his new Delco that Desmond dismantled trying to figure out how it worked. I am not sure the young Desmond ever reassembled that electrical plant. The story is also told that as a child, Desmond was always trying to drive away Uncle Bobsy's car. And Daddy did it for me. And the Royal Mail van that was operated by Mr. Wilson, at whose house he lived with his mother. His obsession with the Royal Mail van, now you can see the connection with the telegraph, all right, it might come out a little more, clearer later. His obsession with the Royal Mail van made the family wonder for a while if he was interested in the telegram business. For you Gen Zers, this is not a modern day messaging app, but the means by which urgent messages were sent through the post office and delivered by the telegram man who came to the community on foot from Lamb Hall. Yes, he walked from Lamb Hall. This was not always a welcomed individual, as sometimes the news was not good. Often, it was that someone had died and the telegram may even arrive long after the funeral. Oh dear. But let me get back to the story. <laughs> My mother shared that Desmond was fast and reliable and was often the one sent with important messages. Go in the face of having another teacher. You can't be feeling, you're getting the connection, people? <laughs> right. In fact, he was the one who was sent to call the community midwife when my mother was to deliver her firstborn son, my brother Brenton, and also when I was to be born, I was wow. second born. Another occasion on which Desmond was sent to deliver important news was on the passing of our family patriarch, Felix Alexander Harvey, affectionately called Wee Wee in the early 1980s. I was at home 
recommend it to God or Orlando because we want God to get Brenton, Jerome, and our late cousin Howard from the river. Or rather the stream that ran at the bottom of Desmond's grandfather, would have Goldburn's property. Desmond inquired of mom's whereabouts, and when I told him, he was not amused. Rather than going down the hill to tell her what happened, he shouted her name. Mom, hearing her name and the urgency in his voice and thinking something had happened to us, was running on the hill as fast as she could, but the news could not wait, and Desmond shouted, Woman, why you must see a yard? Tell you the nose of we dead. <laughs> Mom was so shocked that all she could say was, Will you push me up? Will you push me up with me? Her beloved grandfather had just died, but she had to remain strong and quickly gather us and rushed up to the house in Dawson Town. This traumatic event must have been the one that changed the trajectory of Desmond's journey from a life in the Royal Mail Postal Service delivering messages. <laughs> Instead, he followed the path of being a mechanic, influenced by his fascination with engines and motor vehicles. Professional life as a master mechanic. You may be asking, where and how did Desmond learn to be a mechanic? And as Auntie said, he was very intuitive, so a lot of it was self-taught. But two master mechanics can be credited for training him. First, he studied with Mr. Dovery in St. Anne's Bay, and then with Mr. Gary Cousins, also known as Bully, at Friendship Farm in Walker's Wood. After a while, Desmond's entrepreneurial spirit and ambition led him to open and operate his own garage which later moved to Windsor Road in St. Anne's Bay, where he worked as a mechanic until he took ill. His speciality was ladder motor cars. It is said that Desmond could repair a ladder no matter what state of disrepair it was brought to him in. We can confidently refer to Desmond as a ladder doctor. Most of Desmond's clients were Juta and taxi operators as well as police officers, some of whom are here today to pay their, pay their last respect. Desmond's diagnostic skills were commendable, even when he was reassessing or assessing what was wrong with the vehicle over the phone. I recall one Sunday evening, my brother Orlando was taking me back to Kingston after spending the weekend in New Ground. On reaching Mount Diablo, the RAV4 started malfunctioning. Orlando pulled over to the soft shoulder and called Desmond. Within a few minutes, he reported that Desmond said not to attempt to restart the car, but to get it towed to a mechanic in Monee. We called Dad, who then came and secured a ride for me to Kingston, then towed the car to the mechanic, who confirmed that Desmond's diagnosis was correct. And it would have worsened the problem if Orlando had tried to restart the car. Note that this was before the days of the advanced technology that is being used by auto mechanics. Indeed, he was intuitive. One of Desmond's most admirable character traits was his passion for being early. He would be there at least 30 minutes before an agreed appointment and had zero tolerance for persons who were habitually late. In fact, so wary were we of not keeping Desmond waiting that none of us dared to be late. Desmond was also neat, yes. charming, and humorous. He had, yes indeed, <laughs> he had this infectious laugh that endeared him to many. Herbie Darlington told me this morning that he sure that Desmond laughed even in his sleep. <laughs> Desmond was always neat, and his sister Carol, also known as Debbie, used to tease him that he was too stush. She gave him the nickname Tito for the way he always tucked in his shirt and drew his bed tight. That name stuck with him for a long time. Debbie recalls that initially she used to consider Desmond as miserable, but eventually came to realize that he was just being protective of her and the other members of the family. His brother Marlon recalls that Desmond always found a joke to greet him with and taught him many life lessons. This was especially evident in his final days 
when he will openly express his love for his brother. As a young man growing up in New Brown, Desmond and his friends, such as Tally, Jolly, Bob, Wayne, Faith, and Billy, were always hanging out together. These young men could run a boat. In fact, they are the forerunners to the practice of eating dumpling and butter, which is now touted in the lyrics of a popular song by the dancer artist version. Tell him recall one occasion that Auntie Una either hid or destroyed all of Desmond's clothes in an effort to keep him from going out with his friends. But Desmond was not perturbed. He simply repurposed one of his t-shirts into something fashionable, and as a youth of today would say, there's one blue road. <laughs> this group of young men were always up to mischief, yes. right? And they said it earlier, and kept the older men in the community, such as Mr. Hilton <coughs> and Mr. Gordon busy trying to stop them from raiding their fruit trees, pineapple, or cane fields. They also recall that Desmond liked sports, especially football. But it was no good at the games, as he was always too stiff and stush, and he was to get his clothes rumpled or dirty. This habit of keeping his clothes spotless and neat seemed to have been his trademark, except when he was at the garage. And as Shanaki told me, that he had to be in before he left the garage, didn't matter what time of night. He had to go home looking stush. <laughs> Desmond, the fantastic father. We will not look at Desmond, the fantastic father. Desmond is father to the lovely Shanaki. Will you all come in, please? <laughs> bragging about his daughter from the moment she was born and never missed an opportunity to update us as she attained each milestone. We knew when she passed her examination at Frankfurt High School, when she began studying at Northern Caribbean University, when she graduated as a registered nurse, when she started working at the University Hospital of the West Indies, and when she migrated and began working as a nurse in the United States of America. Trust me when I tell you people, there's one was the most proud, the proudest father ever. Yes. That deserves applause, right? Yes. The sentiments were returned as Cain loved and cherished her father. This was evident especially during the period of his illness when she made numerous trips to Jamaica to ensure that he was receiving the best medical care, medical treatment and care. She always considered her dad her hero and felt so blessed to have benefited from his love and guidance in her life. She declared that he, was, he always made her feel beautiful, smart, and special. He shared that when he took her to the University in Mandeville, she was really sad. She was really sad when he was leaving, being that it was her first time away from home and she felt lonely. But this man, with his usual keen sense of humor, tried to comfort her with jokes. His parting shot was, never mind K, you still make a lot of friends because the water is so cold that when you come alone, then soon learn of the time. <laughs> Plus, remember that when you want to come back home, just call me, we come feel. She felt reassured and managed to give it, despite being fearful that she was on her own in a new environment. K also shared that on one occasion, when she took her dad to the United States of America, they were booked on a particular airline that is named after two of the cardinal points. Let us call them Southwest. <laughs> no, this airline does not have designated seats. So, when Desmond boarded the flight and realized that all that he considered as a good seats had been taken, he said to, he said to her, then, here, here, here. And we all know what it means when your name is called three times. <laughs> But Desmond did not stop there. He went for the biggie, her full government name. Shauna K. Shanika Williams. I thought I was here going to be taking a ferry. I want this little other woman to tell me that all of the front seat them full. Me never take thought I was a Jamaica, you know. K, in her usual soft spoken tone, tried to reassure him that all would be fine by saying, Daddy man, the US is just trying to help us find a nice seat. 
She's not a loader woman. There's one burst of laughing that said, it looks like a load she alone the plane to me. <laughs> Needless to say, all the passengers were so amused that it took a while for them to stop laughing. <laughs> Shana K believes that no one, no one can ever replace her father. Desmond died on February 7, 2024, in the University Hospital of the West Indies after a period of illness. He leaves to mourn daughter Shana Kay, sisters, brothers, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, and many other relatives and friends. Loved ones, having examined Desmond's journey through his early life and education, professional life as a master mechanic, as attested to so, by so many here today, and being a fantastic father, we now turn to his lasting legacy. What lessons can we learn from the life of our dear Desmond? One, be early and do not apologize for valuing your time and that of others. Two, follow your dreams, even amid challenges and naysayers. Do not be afraid to launch out on your own. Build your own empire and surround yourself with those whom you want in your inner circle. Three, do not restrain your laughter. Laugh, laugh, and make others laugh. Happiness is priceless. Amen. Fourth and final, always look and be your best. Do not apologize for being stush. <laughs> as long as it is not at the expense of others. Sleep on this month. We love and we always miss you. Thank you, ladies. Well spoken, Dr. Sharon Haley. Bless the Lord, everyone. And now we will have Sister Althea Rose doing a musical selection. She'll sing and make us happy as the best is yet to come. When she moves away from this podium, pulpit, whatever you call it, comes. Bishop Howard L. Francis, Assistant Superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church of Jamaica, a man who's been married for 43 years and is a good man. <laughs> Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Please worship with me as I see. I am happy every day as I travel through this land. I've been mighty blessed by God, and I'm holding to His hand. The journey is almost over, the battle is almost won. But I have a feeling in my heart, the best is yet to come.
intention for man is that we would live eternally. But where this body is concerned, we can't live eternally in this body. You may sit. Thank you for standing. And the scripture that was read, it's in a question form, the first lines. If a man die, shall he live again? Physical death is a consequence of sin. Uh -huh. The universality of death speaks of the universality of sin. Uh -huh. Physical death affects the body only and it is not the cessation of existence of the consciousness of mankind. Yes. According to Luke chapter 16, the story is told from verse 19 through to the end of two men that were specifically used. One is considered a rich man and the other is considered as one that is in severe need was laid at this man's gate daily, uh -huh. desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Oh, and he had a challenge to access the food that was the refuse of the rich man. Uh -huh. and so he had a, a challenge to access the, the refuse uh -huh. because he was not the only one that was at that rich man's gate. But there were some of what we would call Desmond's friend. Dogs. Some dogs were there. <laughs> and, and that man had a challenge to, to gain access to some of those food to uh, satisfy his need. Uh -huh. And so scripture tells us that the, the dogs came and licked his sores as well uh -huh. to give him comfort because of his condition. However, the scripture tells us that both men died, and if you have your Bibles, and you would go to the scripture because death affects only the physical body, but 
it does not affect uh, or, or stop the, the, the cessation of our consciousness. We still are conscious after death. Amen. So the scripture tells us, when I listened to what was read earlier on, two lessons that were read, the last one, that's John 14 verses 1 through the 3, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And so, that speaks to a specific set of persons. Then the, the first scripture that was read, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, speaks of persons in general as praise to the Lord, and specifically now the church, those who are believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, are in the Lord. It tells us that if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, uh -huh. oh praise the name of the Lord, you know. We believe that he died. Yes. We believe that he's coming back. Amen. It tells us that the, the Lord himself yes. shall descend from heaven. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain ah. shall be caught to take that with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So it says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. So that does not speak of what we refer to as a general resurrection. Because some folks will be risen first, hello, yes. and some afterwards. Yes. And so it is only those who are classified as dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Shall we praise the Lord? Amen. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Amen. So there's going to be kind of a meeting. Yes. And so how do you become one or considered as one that is classified as keeper? What the scripture speaks of this Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 tells us how you get into Christ. Galatians 3, 27. It says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. So, I was able to put on my clothing today. To be here. I mean, my clothing, like all of us who are clothed here today. So, the scripture tells us how does one put on Christ? You get into Christ, you, you put him on by baptism, Galatians 3 27. Yes. And so, one ruler who came to Christ by night, according to St. John chapter 3, he was considered a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews, and so he came to Christ by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say to you, Except the man born of war again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So slow down a little bit. It necessitates a second birth to see the kingdom of God. Go ahead. How can a man be born again when he is whole? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? And the born again, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say to thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot slow down a little bit. So Christ said it. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? There is 
a way that is fixed. To gain entrance into God's kingdom. Yeah. Somebody worship the Lord. Amen. And so this ruler came by night seeking uh, the, the, the instructions as it relates to how he could be able to enter into God's kingdom. And the Lord shared with him the things that were necessary to be done. Amen. Except a man be born of water. Can we praise the Lord? You see, the second birth is important. And, and it is similar to, it may take some shape or some form or, or some of that which happens where the first birth is concerned. That's right. There must be some water that is broken. Yeah. Can we praise the name of the Lord Jesus? Yeah. And, and so that took place before a child could come into this world. Are you with me? Yes. And, and the second thing is that. Amen. The fresh breath of air. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. It's like receiving that spirit from God within him. Hallelujah. And so when the conversation went on, Jesus said, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Nicodemus questioned him and he responded to him. Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit, his spirit, the natural man, cannot inherit the things of God except he is born again. There is a spirit world, hallelujah. And all of us here today, we are connected to that spirit world. Can we praise the name of the Lord Jesus? Because when God formed man from the dust of the earth, hallelujah, he breathed into his nostril the breath of life, hallelujah. Like the baby when that child is born, that breath of life, hallelujah, caused that child to express itself or herself as it relates to life, hallelujah. And you hear a certain sound, those of you who work in the medical field, can we praise the name of the Lord Jesus? Recognize that this child is alive. Somebody praise the name of the Lord Jesus. That which is born of flesh is flesh. Hallelujah. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. There is no going around the must. Somebody worship the Lord. There is no alternative where must is concerned. Must means must. Oh, bless the Lord. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And we praise the Lord Jesus. And so the conversation went on. So the Lord shared with him, because the Spirit, when one received the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, the Lord said, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, or whence it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. It's a kind of a phenomenon that is not natural. Hallelujah. It's a divine operation of God Himself. And so he said, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, or whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Somebody worship the Lord Jesus. And then he was and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus said unto him, Listen, I am a ruler of the truth, and knowest of these things. If I tell you of the things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell of heavenly things? Can we praise the Lord Jesus? No man hath ascended up into heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven, he who is God, was right there on earth with him, and he was sharing with him. No man hath ascended up into heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven, if I tell you of earth, earth and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heaven of things? He said, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Somebody worship the Lord. His purpose for coming is for now. Ezekiel 18. God's desire is for his creation to life. 
I don't forget, we were in St. Luke chapter 16, so we'll get back there, because death doesn't cause the cessation of consciousness. The body ceases to exist, but the soul and the spirit, death doesn't affect your soul and your spirit. Come on, somebody. So here the scripture tells us in Ezekiel 18, verse 3. As I live, said the Lord, you shall not have occasion anymore to use his proverbs in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also is the soul of the Son is mine. And the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Slow down. So all souls belong to God. So when God breathed the breath of life into man, man became a living soul. So all of us, Amen. we belong to him. Amen. And he said, all souls are mine. Amen. And so where it was used once that the father, in fact it's there in the scripture, the father saw our healer, saw a grave and called the children's teeth to set on the edge. But he said, ah, you won't have occasion to use that proverb anymore in Israel. It is not because of my sin, my son should suffer because of that. He said, all souls are mine. And the soul that sinned, it shall die. I share with you earlier on that it's just one man who caused sin to enter into the world. Are you with me, somebody? But the Lord is sharing with us back in that same Ezekiel chapter 18, Sister Francis. Let's go to verse 31 and 32. Those two last verses. 31 and 32. Cast away from so you. the Lord is saying, cast away from you. All your transgression, whereby you transgress against me, make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Why will you die? Because the wages of sin is death, and it's not God's will that any should perish. Just to pass away from you the transgression. We inherit that nature of sin, so we're all guilty of sin, all of sin, and come short of the glory of God. So the Lord said, Why wow, will you die, O house of Israel? Wherefore, well, I have no, have no pleasure in the death of him that died, said the Lord. Slow down. It's, God is not happy just like we are today. We're not happy because of death when it's no longer with us, uh -huh. where life is concerned. And so the Lord said, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that died, said the Lord. Wherefore, turn yourself. We owe it to ourselves to live. Amen. We owe it to ourselves to live. And so, he who is God came in flesh. A question was asked, if a man dies, shall he live again? Yes. So we go back to Luke 16. And so we would understand that physical death to the Christian is a kind of a, leaves a kind of peculiar qualification uh -huh. that speaks to sleep. Uh -huh. And so we're anticipating that day when we shall be awakened Amen. to be with him. Amen. But here we need to understand failing to turn ourselves and live according to Ezekiel 18, 32, where he said, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that died, said the Lord. We have to turn yourself and live. It's like repenting of our sins and turn. So go ahead and read. Uh, Luke 16. Let's look at verse 22. It came to pass that the beggar died. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels, angels into Abraham's house. Stop. So at death, we have an arresting angel uh -huh. that will be there to receive us at death. I'm talking about the soul that cannot die. The real you. Yes. Because man, we are told it's a tripartite being. He's Spirit that gives him God consciousness and every person that lives on the earth, you're conscious that there's a God. Uh -huh. The soul that gives us self-consciousness uh -huh. enables us to understand who we are, 
Are you with me? Our real, true personality. Yes. The real self. Yes. And the body is that kind of a tabernacle, that house that houses the soul. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. And so man operates and demonstrates life and doings, etc., through the body. Uh -huh. And so this body is limited to time, and no wonder the wise man Solomon declares a time to be born and a time to die. Yes. But after this, according to if Hebrews 9.28, it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. So, the receiving angel is awaiting us at death Amen. to receive us and to take us to our destination. The moment your breath exits your body, you will become conscious of your environment. That's right. Can we praise the name of the Lord Jesus? And so, verse 22 tells us, Amen. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by an angel into Abraham's bosom, the place of comfort and solace, a, a place of happiness and joy. Oh, praise the name of the Lord Jesus. When you live your life in the way that the Lord has designed it for you to live, then when you accept him as your personal savior, you would have done that which it takes to make you qualified to pass from spiritual death to eternal death. As John 5, 24 states, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say it to you, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to real life. Somebody worship him. And so here we have it. The scripture tells us that the rich man also died and was buried. He also had a meeting, yes. an escort. Uh -huh. Can we praise the name of the Lord Jesus? It determined how you live, where you spend your eternity. Yes. So there's an holding place. Yes. And in heaven. Slow down a little bit. There's an holding place. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Officer. Former officer, and we have a celebrity here. Former officer. You do have a hold in place uh -huh. when you arrest someone for a crime. Am I correct? Uh -huh. Yes. So there's a hold in place. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Let's go to Isaiah 9 and let's go. Uh, Isaiah 14, verse 9. Isaiah 14. There's a hold in place. If you fail to serve God and live for Him, and you just continue the way you are, you know, Paul said, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? You, you share you share that, Dr. Miller, as it relates to a grace. Are you with me? Isaiah 14, verse 9. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? If you continue, you're only doing yourself an injustice. That's right. So here in Isaiah 14, verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved. Hell from beneath is moved, is moved to meet thee at, at thy coming. coming. Somebody praise the Lord Jesus. Oh, my God, help me. So the first lesson that was read makes reference to the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So it is the Lord himself that's going to meet his people. Amen. Somebody worship him. Hallelujah. For those who repent of their sins, baptized in the name of the Lord, for as many as have been baptized in Christ, you put on Christ. Amen. So the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of God, angel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the hill. But here we have it, another kind of a reception that will be happening. It says, Hell from beneath, Hell from beneath is moved to me, for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It's stirred up the dead for thee. For thee. Even all the chief ones of the earth, mm -hmm. it has raised up from their throne. Raised up from their throne. All the kings of the nations. All the kings of the nations. All they shall 
speak and say unto thee, uh -huh. Art thou also become weak as we? Uh -huh. Art thou become like unto us? Uh -huh. Thy pump is brought down so to the grave. Thy pump is brought down to the grave. And the noise of thy the noise of thy That's a musical instrument. Violas, are you with me? The worm is spread on the thee. The worms are spread on the thee. And the worms cover thee. The worms cover thee. Slow down, slow down. You are in Isaiah 14. My prayer. Back up to Isaiah chapter 5. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? I'm just trying to enlighten us because for God so loved the world as he continued to talk to Nicodemus that he gave his only begotten son that those who believe in the name should not perish. But have life. Everlasting. Isaiah 5. You can go from verse 12, Sister Francis. From 11. Uh, 11. Woe unto them. It says, Woe unto them that rise, rise up early in the morning. And that, they, that they, they may follow strong drink. drink. Slow down a little bit. I'm just trying to help us. I'm just trying to share with us some of the things that will prevent us from enjoying God's provision where life eternally is concerned. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Bless the Lord. And there are some folks who rather this kind of a spirit, strong drink, rather than the spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. That so it said, woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, in the morning that, that they may follow strong drink, that continue, that continue until night, until wine inflame them. And, and the vile musical instrument. The tablet, musical and instrument, pipes, and wine are in their feast. But they regard, but they regard the not the word of God. Neither consider, Neither consider his operation God. of his hand. Therefore, hell, my people are gone into captivity, captivity because they have no, they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished. Their, their multitude dried up, dried up first. with the first. Wherefore, Therefore, Therefore hell hell enlarge herself. Open her mouth without measure. And their glory, the glory and their multitude, and their pounds. If that rejoices, then shall, shall descend into it. it. Somebody worship the Lord Jesus. Oh, it's not a comfortable place. No. So when you go back to the scripture in St. Luke chapter 16, and you were reading, look at verse 23. The rich man also died and in hell. Luke 16, 23. Yeah, all right, let's go while she, she's coming, right? The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Abraham, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger into water, and he may cool my tongue, for I am torment in this place. Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all of this, between us and you, there is a gulf, great gulf that is fixed, so that they which would pass from ends to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us. Pass to us. That would come from thence. That would come from thence. Can we praise the Lord in the morning? So he was now, he was now sending message from hell. Uh, Listen, Dr. Miller said she planned to get to Desmond, but when she was making that kind of a preparation or effort to go, the news came back, he's already dead. She mentioned her timing was out. Yes. Hallelujah. My this man's timing Went out. was out. There, no message could come from hell. Just brothers, he said, I have five brethren. I wouldn't want them to come to this place. Abraham said, no, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Uh -huh. He said, well, if one goes to them from the dead, 
they will be persuaded. Abraham said, no, neither if one rose from the dead, they will not be persuaded. And there are some folks here today, I would to God you become persuaded. That death, it's not the end of real life. No. It's just the cessation of our existence here on earth at this time. This body is not permanent. No. It's just a kind of a temporary house. Ah. And so in 1 Corinthians 5, uh, Paul said, we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, yes. we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, yes. eternal in the heaven. For in this we grow. We have all kinds of pains and aches. Are you with me? For in this we grow. Earnest. Earnest the desiring to be clothed upon our house, which is from above. Hallelujah. Somebody worship the Lord. He is going to prepare a place for us as the second scripture. Make reference to this and let not your hearts be troubled. You see, there are some better things in store for us. A better and unenduring substance. This will decay and die. But you who lives within the body lives eternally. But it determines how you live here will determine the place you spend your eternity. Can we praise the name of the Lord Jesus? Glory to God! In this we grow earnestly desire to be Thrown upon with our house, which is from above, from heaven. If so be that, so be that we may be clothed, we shall not be found naked. naked. So naked is that the man is body died, and he was now in a disembodied state, still having his consciousness. Yes. He was able to see, he was able to feel, he was able to taste, he was able to hear. Come on, all the five senses were active. Uh-huh. Amen. Yes. And so I'm looking forward to that change. And there's a criterion for us to fill, for us to be a part of his kingdom. Yes. He said to Nicodemus, you must be born again, born of the water and of the spirit. Amen. Yes. And nobody here today should go to hell. Nobody. Amen. I've gone to Canada. It requires a visa. Uh -huh. I've gone to America. It requires a visa. Yes. I've gone to Israel. It requires a visa. Uh -huh. I've gone to Jordan. It requires a visa. Uh -huh. I've gone to Egypt. It requires a visa. Come on. Yes. And other places. Yes. And if I didn't meet those qualifications, I would just go on there. Yes. Can we praise the name of the Lord Jesus? And so the, 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 the prescription is here. It's in the word for us to make it into God's kingdom. Amen. 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 So if a man dies, shall he live again for sure? For sure. Where will we spend our long eternity? John 5, 27 through 29. St. John chapter 5. And have give him authority to execute judgment also because he's a sad man. Marvel not at it. Marvel not at this. For the, for the hour is come in the wind. All, all the night are in the grave. Shall hear his voice, hear his voice and, and the wood come, come, come forth to awake. They, have done they that have done good unto the resurrection, unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil. They that have done evil. Unto the resurrection of damnation. Wow. Let us stand, everybody. We are mature enough to make quality decisions. Amen. And we praise the Lord in the body. Amen. And as it is appointed of the one who wants to die, after this then comes the judgment. The Christians, according to verse. Corinthians 5 7 tells us, For we walk by faith, not by sight. 
to walk by faith side by side. We're always confident. Would it rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord? Hallelujah. And it says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ for sin, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that which he had done, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's assess ourselves, brothers and sisters, folks who are here today. Here we have what the enemy did. Roll on the back of sin comes into the world of talking about death and affects every human being. But Christ came and he conquers death. And he said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I've got the keys of death and hell. It's for us today to access that which Jesus had done. No condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus. When you accept him, that condemnation is moved and you will pass from death to life. When this ceases to exist, you will know where you will go. God bless you today. As you seek to do that which is a part of us, by the Lord himself, to be a part of his kingdom, like he said to them, he was, you must. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to give the Lord thanks for his word to us today. It's teaching, preaching, admonition. And I wish to God that we will understand and we will do as we ought to do because we want to make it to heaven. We do not want to make it to hell. It's a matter of choice. May we make our right decision. Choice, challenges, circumstances are in decision making process. But I wish to God we make the right choice. I'm going to ask the family members to sit because we know this is one of the hardest part of this service. I'm going to ask all of the ones who are a bit stronger to stand. Sister Susan, Minister Susan Barnes Wilson will be coming in a while to pray for the family members. And if there are others who would love to give their lives to the Lord, we are going to ask you as she starts praying for you that you move forward and we will pray for you as well. Bow your heads and tell you when to stretch your hands towards the family members. Jesus, that you continue to 
outside the run about the hospital on top of it. Because it's going to be challenging with the traffic to go out. What do right. you think? What we should I do? Go back in at the town and see the highway past the police station and the highway. So go in at the town and go down to Roxborough. Roxborough. Yeah, man. Examination depot and go. So there's the police station there? Yeah, yeah. All right.
man that is born of a woman has but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is gone down like a flower. He flees. Of whom may we seek for succor but of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are just displeased. Yet, O Lord God, most holy, O Lord, most mighty, O holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us not in the bitter pain of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ear to our prayer, but spare us, Lord, most holy, O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal. Suffer us not at our last hour of death or any pain of death to fall from thee. You could go ahead, Laura. Boss. Go ahead. For as much as it hath pleased the Almighty God, and his wise providence came out of this world, the soul of our deceased brother, we are therefore coming this body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, no, my dust to dust. I'm looking God. for that general resurrection in the last day and in the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty Big man. to judge the world, the earth, and the sea shall give world. up their dead. You can't tell me no, 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 man. And the corrupted bodies of those who sleep in My uncle boy, yeah, what can you want? Just keep your mouth shut. Shall he? Ask the father. He shall be changed and be made like unto his own glorious body. <laughs> According to this mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things. I heard the voice from heaven saying, Right. From henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labor, and their work do follow them. Amen. We will be turning to our program. While those who are attending to the grave doing their work, we will be singing from the program. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. Fly away. 